Hey, it's Phoebe and today I'm in Sri Lanka. Alright, this is my first time visiting Sri Lanka and so far I've been really surprised by it. I had kind of thought it would be like India but it's really not. Uh, Sri Lanka is a patchwork of different landscapes, religions, warm hospitality and natural beauty all woven together and as I'm discovering there is a lot to see eat and do here <laughs> now in this episode we're delving deeper into this colorful country as we explore the southern half of Sri Lanka we're gonna be visiting a few of Candy's unmissable spots exploring the best viewpoints around Ella and Nawara Elia and diving into the vibrant energy of Colombo and on this trip I'm traveling with another travel blogger Lindsay of the Frugal Frolicker. There's a link below to check her out. And you guys, my microphone broke, so if you notice a few extra voiceovers in this episode, that's why. To get to Sri Lanka, I flew with Singapore Airlines to Colombo, so a huge thank you to them for having me on board. They are my all-time favorite airline, so if you're planning an adventure of your own anywhere in the world, be sure to book with them. And if you're coming to Sri Lanka, make sure you get your online visa sorted beforehand. So our morning started in Siguria, and now we're in one of Sri Lanka's most culturally significant cities. It took around two to two and a half hours to drive here to Kandy. Now this area definitely reminds me of Ubud, sort of Chiang Mai, very lush jungle with the river running past. It's beautiful. And we have just checked in at Jetwing Blue, one of their properties. This place is stunning. It is a boutique hotel with only 26 rooms. It's set along the river. It is exactly what I need right now because you guys this is the face of exhaustion oh my god I I am I'm out I'm so tired I'm so tired I feel like I've got like oh yeah I do I've got mascara everywhere I've got that you know like it sits under your eye oh my gosh I'm making a cup of tea so just hang there oh, wait you're gonna love this okay I will give you a full hotel tour in a second but first let me show you this <laughs> this beautiful boutique hotel with its 26 rooms every room has a butler <laughs> what <laughs> and the best thing about the butler is she has a burner <laughs> so you hit her on the burner look at this is the old nokia i just sent her a text about dinner she's like text me <laughs> And it's the buttons, remember these? Wait, focus, focus on this, not on me, focus. Remember these? I typed out the message. I had to press the, the number five button three times to get the letter L. If you're an elder millennial like me, you remember these. If you're a youngin, this is very strange to you, I understand, but I am loving having a burner. That's so fun. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna have this cup of tea. I'm gonna sit alone in silence and recharge my introvert batteries. <laughs> And then at precisely 6.55 p.m., we're gonna leave this room and go and have dinner at 7 p.m. But right now, I'm gonna give you the full hotel tour. Enjoy.
this is exactly what I need. In a scene straight out of The Bachelorette, they've set up <laughs> the most romantic dinner underneath this huge tree. They've got hanging lights, a ring of candles, flowers on the table, and it's just for me and Lindsay. <laughs> Just two gal pals having dinner together. <laughs> you know what? I'm feeling the fantasy though. I'm really into it. Um, this is the relaxing alfresco de noir I did not know I needed. Just the, the timing of coming here could not be better. Actually, oh, okay, after I said it or after I hung up the camera, <laughs> after I talked to you just before, I realized I said the wrong thing. I said Jetwing Blue. No, Jetwing is the name of the group. This one is Jetwing Candy Gallery. Apologies, Team Jetwing. Wait, my sincere apologies. That's the right one. I'll have it linked below for you. Just <laughs> block me out. I'm delirious today. I'm delirious. All right, here's what's gonna happen. Treating myself to a lime juice. Uh, uh, uh. Um, my butler and her burner have gone to get that. She spent the whole afternoon preparing this amazing dinner setup. Um, and then we're going to eat. We are going to eat. And I'm envisioning for myself this evening a bath. The bathtub in that room looks so good. I just need some me time. I need some pampering. I need some relaxation. Let's start with dinner. That was a really long one. I hope you enjoyed that. Um, and you get that one because I'm super, super happy this morning. Nothing is too much for the butler. Whatever your heart desires, if you can dream it, she can do it. <laughs> you thought Disneyland was the happiest place on earth? No, it's this place for the butler. So last night she was like, peruse the breakfast menu before you go to bed and let me know what you'd like. They've got porridge. And I was like, can you make it without milk? And she was like, yes. With cinnamon, yes. And banana, yes. And honey, yes. And here we are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm two for two on porridge days now. I will say this porridge is excellent. It's a really, really good porridge. Oh my God, so they bring out like little baskets, little baskets shaped like leaves, full of pastries, gluten-free breads, plunger coffees, Eggs, whatever you want, they've got it. The whole menu looked amazing. If I could, I would have ordered all the pancakes and stuff, but I'm being so good with my food, and I have to tell you, today is the best my tummy has felt in a really long time, so I'm gonna try and stay disciplined. Um, all right, enough talking, I need to eat. Porridge, breakfast, and then we are gonna meet our new guide, and we're gonna go out and explore candy a little bit. I want candy. Do, 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 do. Oh, 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 oh. Candy's history dates back to the 14th century when it became the capital of the Kingdom of Candy after the coastal regions of Sri Lanka were invaded and colonized by European powers such as the Portuguese and Dutch. Managing to maintain its independence against colonial rule, the British family finally captured the city in 1815. In 1988, Candy was declared a UNESCO World Heritage Site due to its historical, cultural and religious significance, and Candy continues to be a major cultural and religious centre in Sri Lanka. So a visit to the Royal Botanic Gardens just west of the city is a really great way to see another side of Candy away from the hustle and bustle before or after exploring the city on foot. And of course, you absolutely have to come here. This is one of the most sacred places of worship in the Buddhist world, so it is unmissable. This is the Temple of the Tooth. 
Now the temple is adorned with intricate carvings, golden roofs and elegant paintings with the Buddha tooth relic kept in a gold casket shaped like a stupa enshrined within multiple encasements. And you guys, if you do plan to come here, just make sure you've got a temple appropriate outfit. If you've been to Thailand, you'll know what that means. If you haven't, you need your shoulders, midriff and knees all covered up. And bear in mind, it's inappropriate to take selfies in here. So keep that in mind. I feel like one day spent in the center of candy is a good amount of time. I'm happy with that. I feel like I saw it, I experienced it, I ticked it off the list. But I gotta tell you, I am very happy to be back at this hotel. Staying here along the water is so peaceful. It's all lush and green. You can see people swimming, fishing in the river. I woke up this morning and did some sunrise yoga and it was just magical. I really, really like this place and I'm glad we've had the two nights here. Um, now that said, we could have eaten lunch in candy, but we decided to come back here for lunch because the food is that good. Isn't that just like the ultimate, the ultimate testament to how much we like it? Um, so I have got some, because I'm still taking care of my tummy team, so I've got some, just some steamed rice, some very simple vegetables, and another beautiful piece of fish. Oh. Actually, Lindsay, what have you got? She's got a veggie, because she's a bit more interesting with me, than me with food at the moment. She's got a veggie wrap mm -hmm. with some homemade crisps. Yeah. Yeah, and a little side sauce. How is it? So good. So good. There you go. The sauce is a little bit spicy. Oh. Just a little bit. Oh. The service here is also unreal. Right, let's try this fish. I already know it's going to be good. I can tell it's cooked well. It's so soft when you put your knife through it. Yeah. Yum. Mm -hmm. Alright, next up we're headed south. We're going to be making our way to Ella, nestled in the lush hill country. This area is renowned for its rolling tea plantations, mist covered mountains and cascading waterfalls. And to get us started, we're making our way up the booty burning Little Adams Peak for the very best views of Ella Rock. Let's go! different landscape it's also lush and mountainous compared to the other places we've been you know it feels like everywhere you go every different place we visit offers something different I don't think I've ever been somewhere quite like this where you can experience that every day we show up to a new location and you know we're on safari one day we're on this wild remote beach the next then we're at this resort where there are lots of people and it's beautiful and then we're climbing up Sigiriya and I don't know, now we're out here in the mountains. Waterfalls, tea plantations, it's just a beautiful landscape. You know, I said to you guys earlier that I was really, really happy today and I had an amazing meditation. I just had a lot of clarity. Um, I want to share some of that with you. So what happened was I found myself sitting there this morning and this question came to my mind, how do I know? How do I know if something is the right decision? How do I know if this thing that I feel called to do is the right thing? How do I know if uh, people in my life are the right people to surround myself with? How do I know if I should go somewhere, if I should do something? And the answer came back, just go. You know, and the more I started to think about it, it was like, you know, if you eat vanilla ice cream your whole life, right? But you're always wondering, I wonder, I wonder what mint chocolate chip tastes like. I wonder if I would like that. There's only one way to know, and that's to taste the mint choc chip, right? And it doesn't really matter whether or not you like it. One way or another, you'll know. <laughs> so I just feel like as I start to move forward through this new phase of my life, and I'm really like <sighs> building trust in myself and confidence in myself, I just find myself more and more wanting to try more flavors. And even though I may not know in advance whether or not I like them, I'm going to try. 
and slowly but surely I'll figure out which flavors I do and don't like. And then I'll have more flavors to choose from, not just vanilla all the time. Um, I've gotten changed into a fresh, clean, non-sweaty outfit <laughs> and now we're trekking through the jungle on this path trying to get to the next place and apparently this spot is also like a must-do, this is a must-visit so I thought we should go check it out and see if it's really worth it or not. <laughs> Hi. Hi! I'm a little nervous though because it's a long winding path down which means it's a very very steep walk back up. Oh. I am gonna be schwitzen. I hope it's worth it. You guys know it's hot when the messy bun comes out. <laughs> so, the Nine Arch Bridge, let's talk about it. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful to see. A couple of things to note, it's extremely hot. I would 100% recommend going there early. Uh, get up here for sunrise, get out here in the dark, whatever, like get here before it gets super, super hot. Also, there are a lot of people and they're all there getting their Instagram content. I don't judge, I'm doing the same thing, but oh gosh, dog, you scared me. Um, yeah, I don't judge, but just be prepared that like it's a little bit of a media scrum if you want to get the shot. There's a lot of content happening, but it's really beautiful. I think it should definitely be on your list. I mean, if you come here, you have to see it, right? If you make the effort to come to LA, it's just one of those things you really should do. But guys, I'm already huffing and puffing. I've only gone up 10 stairs. <sighs> okay, I'm just gonna take this slow, go on my own pace. This is gonna be a sweaty one. Wish me luck. I am powerful. I am strong. I am capable. I am amazing. I can do it. I am dying. The summit is a long way off. Getting up there is rough. This is rough. But it's worth it. Like, we be dying. I am so sweaty. Why? Why? It keeps going. It just doesn't stop, you know. R.I.P. R.I.P. If I don't make it, you know the drill. Somebody go and clear my browser history. Someone tell the Australian Embassy. Let them know where I am. I just, I can't lie. That's the worst. That really sucks. But the thing is, it's worth it. You gotta do it. There's no way around it. You wanna see it, you gotta go down there, you gotta come back up. Although, you can get a tuk-tuk. <laughs> I don't have cash. If you've got cash, let me tell you this much. If the tuk-tuk took Apple Pay, I would have paid for it a thousand times over, whatever he wanted. 50 bucks, get me out of there. <sighs> so you can catch a tuk-tuk. Um, I, I can't talk. Catch a tuk-tuk if you don't want to walk. All right, we're going to the hotel. I'll see you in a minute. All right, we are on our way to our next location, Nuwara Elia. And apparently the locals refer to this area as Little England. Um, that's because it rains all the time and it's cold. 
<laughs> it's so bizarre to me. I can't understand how Sri Lanka is about to be cold because everywhere we've been so far has been so warm. But I'm telling you right now, I'm up for it because I accidentally gave myself heat stroke. I legitimately have heat stroke. I feel so sick. I just need to lay down and drink a million liters of water. I don't know what I did to myself today, but basically I cooked myself. Anyway, for accommodation, we are staying here at Mirage King's Cottage. Now this place is really cute, cozy, rustic. It is very simple and comfortable and it is everything that I need right now. Not only that, but it's gonna be in a great location for what we have in store for us tomorrow. But for right now, it's time to get cozy. I wish I'd done it. <laughs> oh, I just have the longest hotter shower, hair in a messy bun, laptop, room dark, <laughs> and now this is about to be the most honest of travel times. <sighs> Watching movies on your laptop when you probably should be out exploring. <laughs> you guys have got to relate to that, don't leave me hanging. Somebody say in the comments that they would be doing the exact same thing. I can't how cold it is up here actually. I've got the heater on, which is shocking given I was melting earlier today. If I could summon something else for myself, I would love like, like a brownie, fresh out of the oven, gooey in the middle, with like a big old scoop of vanilla ice cream on top. Or I would love some, um, like just like fresh apple pie with the ice cream on top. Are you kidding? That would just make me so happy. I don't need the Wi-Fi password. Oh, that would just make me so happy. early this morning I had a simple little breakfast for myself at the hotel and now we are out and about we've climbed into this Jeep ah! and we're at a place called Moon Plains we're going on a little bit of a safari adventure apparently the scenery here is meant to be amazing and I can confirm it is <laughs> so let's keep going and see what else we can see this morning apparently there are some more really beautiful viewpoints around here Personally, I'm just blown away by the landscape. It feels like every day we go to a different part of Sri Lanka and it's completely different to wherever we were the day before. It's unreal. Located in Sri Lanka's central highlands, Nuwara Elia was discovered by British explorer Samuel Baker in the 19th century. Developed as a retreat during British colonial rule, it became known for its cool climate and lush landscapes. The region thrived as a centre for tea cultivation, and today Nuwara Elia is famous for its scenic beauty, colonial architecture and high quality Ceylon tea. Now a visit to Moon Plains is perfect if you just want to have a fun adventure for a few hours like we have, but if you do have more time you might like to visit Horton Plains and do a walk to a famous spot called World's End. I hear the views are unreal. Now given it's famous for Ceylon tea, a visit to a plantation is essential and we decided to visit Pedro Tea Factory, a historic spot established way back in 1885. Now filming and photography were not allowed on the tour which is totally cool but I do recommend doing it if you're interested in how tea is made because we learned a lot and the tea is actually really delicious. Now once you're done there you might like to head over to Gregory Lake built during the British colonial period in 1873. It is a great spot to just soak in some fresh air, walk around for a little while, or join in some activities like boating and horse riding. But for us, we are keen to get the adrenaline pumping today, so we're gonna do something a little bit wild. Let's go. 
I haven't done whitewater rafting in a really long time. This is Lindsay's first time. She's a little bit nervous. Um, if you didn't see Lindsay before, we're on this trip together. She is a travel blogger and her name is The Frugal Fro Frolica and I will have that link below for you. Sorry, I stumbled on my words. I'm just really excited. Um, all right, I'm gonna chuck my phone and this camera back in the car and we're gonna do this all on GoPro. <sighs> this could turn out anything. My GoPro has been so unreliable lately, but let's just see how we go. All right. What an absolute legend. Um, it was raining before we went to do that and there was a bit of apprehension like you're gonna get wet anyway but I was a bit like I don't know if I can film it if it's like ripping down rain. I'm so glad we did that. If you come to this area that's a that's an essential muster. Um, I've got to get out of these wet clothes because we have a two and a half three hour drive to Colombo. Um, so I'm gonna get dried off, get changed and then we're going to Colombo. I've never been before. I'm so excited to check it out. Let's go. Woo! Woo! accommodation in Colombo, we're staying at the Galley Face Hotel, an iconic Sri Lankan landmark. It is in the perfect location along the seafront overlooking the famous Galley Face Green and it is one of the oldest hotels east of the Suez. And one of my favorite things about staying here is how beautiful the sunsets are. The hotel is luxurious and plush inside with incredible service from the moment you arrive. Now I'm staying in room 3050 and I love how spacious it is with a huge bed that's super comfortable, amazing views over the green, a really big desk and a huge bathroom. Now I'll also say this, the food on site is fantastic. I don't always love a hotel buffet but the food here is amazing. So if you're looking for a really great place to stay in Colombo, this spot is perfect. Morning, you guys. We are out and about exploring Colombo this morning. This is my first time here. I have no idea what to expect. It's a very big city, very busy so far, but I'm really loving being out on the street actually. It's got a really cool vibe to it. Now it's a Sunday, so it is going to be a little more quiet today, but we're going to be going around seeing some of the major sites, including this beautiful mosque. Whoa! I've seen a lot of mosques. I've been to a lot of religious buildings in my travels, but this is one of the prettiest. It is gorgeous. Sri Lanka's capital city, Colombo, has a history spanning some 2,000 years. 
as a vital trading port, it attracted traders from various regions and in the 16th century fell under Portuguese control, then Dutch, and finally British rule in 1796. And it is this influence that shaped the urban landscape of Colombo. After gaining independence in 1948, the city continued to flourish, blending its colonial past with vibrant Sri Lankan culture. And today, it is a bustling metropolis, packed full of great spots to explore. And with that, you guys, that brings this week's episode to a close. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Now, if you don't already, be sure to subscribe right now so you never miss a single episode. Did I say to say hello in the comments below? I'm so tired, I can't remember. Either way, I will see you with a brand new episode next week. Love ya! Thank you.